Double A. Gavin Allred is going to go out and have a conversation with X Holiday. Josh Smith is also going to come from the dugout. He's going to have a conversation with X. Just wants to clear things up, make sure he's good to go. Three to one is your score. The Phoenix plating their first run courtesy of a walk after X Holiday issued back to back walks. I think we're back up on radio and uh, Facebook Live, YouTube, and NFHS. And again, apologize. I apologize. It overheated again. Uh, so even in the shade, even in the shade, it overheated. Yeah. So uh, what you missed, uh, Sam? Why don't you right describe here, to us what we what what uh, what was missed while we were off the air? Just yeah. For X Holiday had two on and two out. He would issue a walk to Patterson to load the bases. Clements would come up. X would fall behind two and zero in the count, but would battle back and get it to a full count, and then would miss high with ball four, and that would walk in the first run of the afternoon for the Phoenix, and the score is now three to one. Rush Falk will be the batter. No, correction, Luke Caldwell, excuse me. The, the right fielder, Caldwell, is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Bases loaded, first pitch on the way from Holiday. Missed upstairs, ball one. So suddenly, as you mentioned before, Holiday was getting some calls that earlier we thought were kind of questionable, and now he's not getting much of anything. That one, we're going to call that a hit batsman. Looks like he offered it that one. He swung at that ball. See if we have an appeal. And here comes Coach Johnson. He stuck his he stuck his hands out there to try to uh, do something, and they're going to call it a hit batsman. We are going to have the umpires get together on it. Coach Johnson didn't even make it all the way to home plate before the umpire is going to go down to the first base umpire, and they will talk about it. I agree. He either went around or didn't get his hands out of the way. I, so I don't know. what We're, we're going to see what this discussion is going to be. I don't think nope, we're going to have – nope, we're not going to have a change of the call. Now Coach Johnson's going to get his two cents in. Yep, he'll get his explanation. Uh, and that's no a, that's explanation. Unfortunate. So that will bring in that's a run. That's unfortunate. And it's a one-run game, three to two, <laughs> thanks to back-to-back -to -back walks and then a questionable hit batsman. It'll be Falk. There's a strike 0 and 1. Falk is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Pitch on the way. It's hitting the air and foul down the left side, 0 and 2. Just a tough series of events over the last three batters for X Holiday. And it's now a one run game after we started this inning at 3 0. That's going to be a base hit to left field to tie the ball game. Maybe the lead note comes back in, and we are tied 3 to 3. And the controversial call comes back, and we're tied. Three to three. Good play there by Jack Roper out in left field. He knew he wasn't going to have a play to catch it in the air, so he played it off that one hop and got it in quickly to at least hold the Phoenix to one run. On an 0-2 pitch. That's going to bring up Ethan Williams, the left fielder. Williams 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Breaking ball high and tight, ball one. Bases are still loaded, by the way. Clements at third, Caldwell at second, Falk at first, Williams at the plate, and the 1-0 is almost going to hit him inside. Two balls and no strikes. Williams a big, tall kid, and that one was right at shoulder level as it came buzzing by him. It's fouled back, two and one. X with a really good first and second inning. And was and doing was pretty cruising, good in, this, yep. in the third inning cruising until in the third. later. 2-1, foul back 2-2. Two two. All three runs coming with two outs in the inning. Yep. Two out trouble is the thing that nightmares are made of. And it's come back to haunt us here. X delivers a 2-2, swing and a miss, strike three. The base is left loaded, but the damage done. Three come across here in the inning. But there are three left, and the Phoenix have tied it up through two and a half, and we head to the bottom half of the third. Cedartown and Sonoraville are locked up 
at three. Back after this 60 second break on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Bradford's Drug Store on North Main Street in Cedartown is your locally owned and operated Good Neighbor Pharmacy. Bradford's accepts most prescription plans and remember Bradford's for all of your gift and decor needs. Bradford's pharmacist takes time to get to know you, explain your medication, and answer any questions that you may have. Go by and see Bill Brewster and all the fine folks at Bradford's the next time you need a prescription filled. Also use their convenient drive through Bradford's Drug Store, 500 North Main Street, Cedartown, 770-748-3100. And all the folks at Bradford's say, Go Dogs. Cedar Valley Golf Course has been the place to play golf in Cedar Town and Polk County for nearly a century. Locally owned and operated since 1924, Cedar Valley Golf Course offers 18 holes of some of the most beautiful fairways and greens in the area. Cedar Valley Golf Course is a proud supporter of the Cedar Town High School Bulldogs and the greater Cedar Town and Polk County region. Call for tee time 770-748-9671, located just south of Cedar Town at 1811 Buckhannon Highway. Cedar Town's original golf course, Cedar Valley Golf Course. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. All tied up as we go to the bottom of the third inning. The Phoenix striking for three runs, courtesies of walks, a hit batsman, and a bloop single to the left side. So it will kind of start over here in the bottom of the third for the Dogs. They did have a 3 nothing lead, and now we're all knotted up. Jackson Pate still on the mound, dealing for the Phoenix. And it'll be the top of the order for Cedartown. Holiday, Allen, where X is one for one. He saw the, took the first pitch that he saw to lead off the game and drove it to the right side. Pate winds and deals, swing and a miss, so and one. He did not score the run because Yarber would come in and courtesy run for X, but his spot did come around to score in that bottom of the first inning. Here's the 0-1. Just missed, not by much, one ball, one strike. No, but happy to see that if X is not gonna get that call anymore, it doesn't look like Pate's gonna get it either. One ball, one strike to count on the Bulldogs hurdler holiday. Low and away, ball two, two and one. The two one pitch is upstairs, ball three. So maybe the dogs can get something going here in this inning. They've been pretty quiet the past couple of innings. On the offensively speaking. Ball four outside, so that'll put it. X aboard over at first base, and we'll take it. Reese Tanner coming in clutch, bringing me in a nice cold power aid from downstairs. Well, Reese was always clutch when he played baseball. You got that right. So, you know, he's. I don't expect anything less. Ace Allen will come to the plate. Ace is one for one with a run scored, and we're going to have another courtesy runner for X, and it will once again be Yarber. And another. Uh, Plume of smoke is settling down. Last night, boy, it was smoky out, out in the country, and here it is in town, and we've had some smoke blow in from the northwest. See if Ace Allen can keep it going. Squares to bunt, he went for it, strike one. Exactly how things started off at Ace's last plate appearance. Showed bunt, took a strike, and then came out of the bunt. Later reached with a base hit. I'm fine with history repeating itself. But we need base runners here. We've already got one throw over to first, and Yarber is back safely. That came off of the walk to Holiday to lead things off. And as of note, I mentioned it earlier, but all three of the Sonorville Phoenix runs there in the top of the third inning came with two outs in the inning. 0-1 to Ace, breaking ball called strike two. Good Inside pitch. corner, it was a very good pitch. Good pitch. Not a lot that Ace can do with that one, but now he has to shorten up and protect as he's behind in the count, 0-2. Allen looking for his second hit of the afternoon. 
0-2 pitch, fastball, strike three ball. Horrible fans in attendance making their pleasure known on that call. And that'll bring up Tony Ware to the plate. I just feel like, Sam, that the momentum's kind of shifted a bit. Oh, I agree. I completely agree. Quite different than the first time these uh, this, this top of the order was at the plate. Tony Ware, one for one with a run scored. He has a chance to get the momentum back with one swing of the bat. Called strike inside corner. And that's definitely not one you can do anything with. No, you can't. You take it and you move on and wait for the next pitch. The 0 1. Bounced up there, ball one. Don't know if there's a controlled burn going on in Alabama or maybe up near Barry or something, but it's really I feel like that's, it's turned really I, smoky I out there. I feel like for those of us here in Polk County, a controlled burn in Alabama is the story of our lives. It is. One one, breaking ball, called strike two, oh, very goodness. late call. Oh my goodness! Not only late, but once again, pretty dang questionable. One ball and two strikes the count. Holy smokes, and we do mean smoke. Throw to first base and diving back in safely is Jacob Yarbrough. Count one ball, two strikes on Tony Ware. Ware trying to move that runner over. One, two pitch. Right there, that was right down the middle, call strike three. So Ware is down on strikes, and that will bring up Samuel Formby. One thing, sorry Sam, go ahead. I was going to say Formby had the big uh, single, the two RBI single that would put the dogs on the board back in the first inning. He You'd did. love to see him launch another one right here. One thing that Seartown was kind of notorious for doing at the beginning of the season was letting things kind of snowball and see if we can change our fortunes here. We won't do it on that one. A bouncing ball to first base, and that will be it. So the dogs leave a base runner, and we're tied through three innings. We head now to the top of the fourth, a 3-3 tie here at the dog pound. Back after 60 seconds on the Seartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Cedar Town Automotive is your one stop for all your automotive needs. For oil changes, new tires, or tire repair, brake work, tune yep. ups, air conditioner service, or repair, think of Cedar Town Automotive. Cedar Town Automotive is a longtime supporter of Cedar Town High School Athletics here on WGAA. Cedar Town Automotive on East Avenue in Cedar Town. Give them a call today at 770 749 5040 or stop by their beautiful location for fast and friendly service. And all the folks at Cedar Town Automotive say, Go Dogs! Looking for a good used vehicle? Don't go out of town. Come see the folks at Dingler Motor Company, 526 North Main Street. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Dingler Motor Company can get you back on the road in no time with their in-house financing. Top quality, pre-owned, late model cars, trucks, and SUVs. Stop by and check out their wide selection at 526 North Main Street across from Livewire Surplus. Call them at 770-748-0906. Search them on Facebook at Dingler Motor Co. That's Dingler Motor Company. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Nothing doing for the dogs in the bottom of the third. We will go to the top of the fourth inning, all knotted up here at Cedartown High School. Sam Branch alongside Andrew Carter bringing you Monday night high school baseball here on the Big Double A Senior Night. Can you believe it? I Can't feel like we it. just started the season. Seems like we just got back from uh, seems like just from the, uh, from, seems like we just got back from uh, from Brunswick seems like just yesterday but unfortunately it is not it'll be eight nine and one due up for the Phoenix here in the top of the fourth Sam Dixon the DH will lead things off Dixon 0 for one oh high called strike there and nothing well, in one look I'm thankful for the gift but I have to agree with some of the O's that you heard. 
That's fouled away, nothing into the count. My question is, will X Holiday be able to shake off? And usually does. He'll be able to shake off whatever uh, happened in that last inning and hopefully maybe uh, have a quick inning here. The 0-2. Ground ball foul down the third base line. I agree with you that I think he absolutely will be able to, but I also think it's key that he have that quick inning. He yes. needs a short one, two, three inning just to get him back into, into rhythm and get him back in the dugout and put our offense back out. There's there. a good off speed pitch and a swing and a miss for good strike. Way to start it. Very good way to start. Strikeout, one gone. That is the, I believe, the sixth strikeout for X Holiday on the game, and it is. And that'll bring up. Mayfield, Mayfield 0 for 1 with a strikeout as well. He's a victim of one of X's strikeouts earlier in the game. That's hit foul down toward first base. 0 on the count as uh, Dingler was going after it. Maybe a chance to, to catch the line drive, but just a little beyond his reach. Peyton would be on deck for the Phoenix. 0 1 pitch, strike two call. Ooh. Good looking pitch there by Holiday. Again, we do apologize for all the interruptions today. We've, I think we've got it remedied. The 2 fastball outside. Well, we, we essentially have the internet hotspot box thingy in the dark with a fan on it. One, two pitch bounced up there, ball two, two balls and two strikes. It's almost like we've tucked it in for a late afternoon nap. Try to keep it cool and comfortable. I'll tell you one thing I saw at one of the places we've been how they kept their equipment cool. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball a bit low for ball three, three and two now. They put their equipment, they had a uh, portable refrigerator. Hey, there you go, nothing wrong with that. 3-2 pitch, fouled away to the right side. And it was, they didn't, it, the refrigerator part didn't work, but they had a fan in there that blew all the hot air out and kept the hot air from from the sun from getting in there. 3-2 pitch on the way, breaking ball, strike three called inside corner. Out number two, strikeout number seven for Holiday, and that was close. It's almost like but, uh, the strike zone varies inning by inning. I, I don't feel like X was getting that call back in the third, and now here in the fourth he's getting that call, but we'll take it. Either way we want to slice it. It's still an out. Jackson Pate, one for two on the afternoon, comes to the plate with two outs. Low and in to Pate, one ball, no strikes. That is X's seventh strikeout. It's also, though, his 72nd pitch thrown. Yeah, he threw a lot of pitches in the third inning. Just missed outside with a fastball, 2-0. and oh. Pate, on the other hand, has only thrown 37 pitches. Most of those were in the first inning. Here's a 2-0. Nice off-speed pitch, 2-1. Good way to battle back there, too. You needed a strike there. You didn't want to go 3-0 up against Pate. 2-1 pitch. Breaking ball didn't break like he wanted to. 3-1, high and outside. Yeah, that one, that one just did not break at all on X. So it hangs up, and now a hitter's count for the dangerous Phoenix pitcher in Jackson Pate. And he'll take ball four, low and in. Two out base on balls will put Pate aboard. That'll bring up Ballou. Pate will reach for the second time, and Ballou still looking to get his first hit. He has a strikeout and a run scored on the afternoon. 3-3 three, three tie. Top of the fourth inning. All the trouble for the dogs last inning came with two outs. Fastball away, one ball and no strikes. After retiring the first two hitters here, X issues the walk, and it's important now to come back and get this out, get us out of the inning right here. Snap throw to first base, and back safely is the runner. Is that Pate running for himself? Looks like it is. Yep. Last inning, they had a pitch running. Oh, yeah. One of the pitches, a strike throw goes down to second off the glove of the, of the shortstop. Pate has it stolen. Throw was a little bit wide, but didn't carry him far away enough for him to advance to third. One ball, one strike now the count, and a runner at second base, the go-ahead run in scoring position, and that of Jackson Pate. The 1-1 to Ballou. 
is down low. Two balls and a strike. Again, X just has to make a good quality pitch here. Got a battle. 2-1. Outside, ball three. Three-one pitch on the way. Here it is, and that's ball four upstairs. First and second now with two outs. Andrew, two quick outs, and then back-to-back -back walks. Now bring up Will Patterson. X has four or seven strikeouts, but four base on balls, and a hit batsman. Yep. To, uh, in addition to the four walks. So Patterson comes to the plate with runners at first and second and two outs. He is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. The dogs need to hold the Phoenix here. Took an inside call for strike one. Nothing in one the count now to Patterson. Patterson, a left-handed batter, steps out of the box to take a few practice swings. Now he's back in there, and X is ready. 0-1 pitch. Hit sharply a, hop, a bad hop over there, but handled there by Caleb Formby, and that's out number three. He throws on the first base. Did you see how high that ball popped as soon as it hit the dirt? But a great job there by Formby to handle that and the game will stay tied 3-3 three to three as we head to the bottom half of the fourth after this 60-second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Rocky and Patty Tillery, two Cedartown High School graduates, and they stayed right here in the county and went into business. They employ right at 100 people, and they've been doing that for a long time. Most of their work is from out of the county, but they want to push our youngsters here, no matter what they're doing, Little League, Pony League, high school baseball, basketball, football, and soccer, and that's Polk County Public Service. They appreciate serving you. Have you been to Croker's Hardware and Supply lately? Croker's is the place to find everything you need from boots to fencing, from plumbing supplies to wood and gas stove fittings, everything, even paint and flooring. Whether you're building or repairing, everything you need is right here at Croker's Hardware on East Avenue. Name brands galore right here in your back door. Orca and Yeti coolers and tumblers, case knives, native eyewear, buck stove grills, and more. At Croker's, you can find everything. Go by and see the friendly staff there at 1192. Rock Mart Highway. That's Croker's Hardware in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. An excellent play by Caleb Formby gets the dogs out of the inning after X Holiday recorded two quick outs. He would then walk two. So the Phoenix strand two in the top of the fourth. We will go to the bottom of the fourth, all knotted up here at three runs apiece. We were talking during the break, that play from Formby saved one run and preserved the lead, and it possibly could have saved a second run as well with the speedy runners on the base pad for the Phoenix. It certainly, certainly did, and uh, just another great play there by that uh, bull, the Bulldog infield, who's always been strong at really all levels of play, from uh, middle school JV all the way up through, high, through the varsity ranks. The Bulldogs DH, Dalen Holiday, will lead it off here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Take, take a look at some of the standings there, Sam. Uh, Heritage uh, is in first place in the region with a 10-2 mark. Uh, likely to win the region probably today. Uh, Northwest Whitfield is second, 8-4. and four. Northwest and Heritage are actually playing each other this week, and we're big. We want Heritage to win the region yes. so we can be a two seed. There's a bouncing ball toward deep second. Through for a base hit. Way to go, Dalen Holiday. Sneaking it past the glove of the second baseman. And Cedartown has a leadoff single. And again, Holiday doesn't do anything fancy there. He just puts the ball in play. And he's aboard to lead things off. And that will bring up number six, Caleb Formby. Go ahead and give us the rest of the, the region standings. Caleb Formby, the batter, but yeah, so uh, Cedartown is currently third at seven and four in region play. We've got one less region game uh, played than Northwest Whitfield does. Central six and six in fourth place in Orville, two games back of Central uh, on the outside looking in. 
It's down low, ball one, one ball and no strikes. So if uh, Cedartown can win at least one game, I think it would eliminate Sonoraville from playoff contention. So Sonoraville playing for their playoff lives for any chance they may have at all. 1-0 pitch to Caleb, and he takes low ball two. Two balls and no strikes. I mean, they got uh, paid out there on the mound, one of their uh, one of their aces out there. Sonorville four and eight in region play. Won their game on Saturday against Southeast Whitfield Biggs, 15 to nothing. That's a uh, it's ball three, three to nothing the count. It's just a, just a testament to how things change from year to year. So Norville right now playing for their playoff lives. The Dogs fighting for second place in the region when last year at this time, these two teams were fighting each other for the region. 3-0 pitch on the way, called strike one. And I can tell you one thing, there's no love lost between these two teams because of how that series went. Uh, Seertown, as you may remember, won the region on a walk-off, a walk-off wild pitch. It was something, it was an exciting end, end, ending to the regular season. 3-1 pitch on the way as a called strike two, a bit below the belt, but a called strike. We won it in game one of the doubleheader here at home, and then we would turn right around and come from behind again to win the second game of the doubleheader, if memory serves me correctly. 3-2 pitch, missed inside, ball four, first and second with nobody out. Good start for the dogs here in the bottom half of the fourth. But you're right, Sam. Uh, they, you know, we were behind and came back and won that game and ended up sweet, uh, taking two out of three. Because if you remember, we went to Sonoraville we and we lost bad. Yes, we did. One of our worst losses of the season. And there was there was a lot of emotions that were going into that ball game with a lot of the players from both sides, and it was just a it was a charged environment when the dogs went up to Calhoun to take on the Phoenix, and unfortunately the Phoenix got the better of us, but then we would bounce back and pick up two wins and clinch the region to give Cedartown their third straight region title. Coaching visit out on the mound with the entire Phoenix infield as Cole Dingler will be up to bat. He is 0 for 1. We also have a courtesy runner out at second base for Dalen Holiday. It'll be number 17, Bobby Jones. Got to see Bobby Jones play some defense on uh, Saturday in the center field. One of those future players we'll get to see next year. First and second, nobody out. A good chance for the senior, Cole Dingler. Well, we need to cash in these base runners. We have the opportunity here to get the lead back and the momentum. Squares to bunt, takes it outside. One ball and no strikes, and Sonorable fans are screaming for a called strike, but it was well off the plate. Well off the plate. One ball and no strikes. But again, that, that's been called a strike, or in that area it's been called a strike today, so. Squaring the bunt again is Dingler. And he lays down a good one to the pitcher's mound. Throw to first base will be in time. Runners move up to second and third. Just a butte there by Dingler. Moves everybody up. Patterson, the first baseman, would come in to field that one. Fire over to first to Mayfield, who had moved over from his spot at second to cover the bag. But the dogs now have runners at second and third and only one out. Phenomenal job there by Dingler to sacrifice himself to move the runners over. It'll be the eighth spot, number three, Gavin Allred, the dogs catcher. All well, red is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Well, at this point, you want him to hit it in the air in the outfield somewhere. Yep. Uh, if you get a base hit, that's great, but we just want to get that run home from third. 3-3 three, three tie, one out, runners at second and third. The pitch. Upstairs for ball one. Got to see a strike first. Jack Roper waiting on deck. Roper also was a victim of a strikeout in his previous at bat. So both these guys right here, you know, a little bit of revenge and maybe pick up a hit as well as an RBI. A little nubber to the right side. The throw will come home and he's out. Oh, he dropped the ball. He's safe. He dropped it. The initial call was out and they called him safe. Bobby Jones coming in from third. 
Coach Johnson getting aggressive there, and it pays off for the dogs, and they have a one-run lead, and it's four to three. Still, two men on for the dogs, and still only one out. Caleb Formby would move up from second to third. Let me just say this about Jones. Jones, uh, he slid in there. He was out, but he slid in hard, and when he did that, the catcher dropped the ball. And a great job there on that base running to, to uh, he knew he was going to be out when, when the throw came in, but gave himself a chance when he slid in hard. And it's a 4-3 lead for the Bulldogs with runners at the corners. We've got a courtesy runner that has come in in the form of Brody Blackman. Blackman, one of those senior dogs that was recognized today pre-game. And it will be Jack Roper 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Another opportunity for the dogs to add another run. They have a one run lead right now, four to three. Roper pops it straight up, back behind us and out of play, nothing in one. A good example of this dogs team that has just stuck with it earlier in the season. A three run inning might have been the death knell for them, but here today they battled back and pulled to a one-run lead and still are threatening. There's a foul tip. No, nothing in two. But yeah, that's the difference between this team now and this team in February. Huge difference. This, this team really has made a lot of significant steps forward as Roper takes that one well outside and in the dirt for ball one. Seertown has the lead again here on a round ball to the right side. From Gavin Allred. One ball, two strikes, the count now to Roper and the pitch. Fastball just missed outside, ball two. That one's gonna get a lot of comments from the peanut gallery. But the count is now even at two balls and two strikes. Rover needs to put it in play again. He calls times. It will be granted, and he will step out. You know, if I recall, last season there was some controversy with some fans uh, and maybe even a coach last year when they came to Cedartown for that doubleheader, especially well, in game two. 2-2 two -two pitch is driven deep and foul. That ball is going to end up in the football practice field. I can tell you that for sure there was some issues with some fans. They were asked to watch the rest of the game from their cars, and as one of them was being escorted out of the facility, Carson Tanner made an announcement over the PA system that if you can't watch the game, you can always listen to it on the big double A. And that comment was well received by the home crowd. 2-2 two -two pitch misses outside. Full count, 3-2. and two. Get a bat here by Roper. Battling back has run the count full. Laid off of a close pitch, and then that one not anywhere near. And he's in a good spot here with the count full. The payoff pitch on the way from Pate. Here it comes. Ball four, high and tight. They're loaded up for X Holiday with one out. And you like this situation right here. And I guarantee you X is going to come into this at bat aggressive. I, oh, I, absolutely he will. He's got the bases juiced. He's got some speedy runners on the base pads, especially there at third base in Formby. And we know Holiday can motor down the line as well. Brody Blackman pretty fast at second base. And Jack Roper pretty about as fast as a Jack Rabbit. Somebody, Brody, you good? How about a jackalope? Well, Brody's got a big lead over there in second, too. I mean, he is almost even with the shortstop. X takes a breaking ball low, ball one. Shortstop is playing in front of him, so there's no way that they're trying to hold him there. So Brody can really pull a Ronald Acuna and go about halfway. Well, it's quite obvious what they're, what they're doing. They're playing for the ground ball yep. to come home. 1-0 pitch. Ooh. Almost hit him inside, 2-0. Buzz the tower there. You see, Ronald, uh, Ronald had another one of those signature steals at third, from second to third against Miami over the weekend. You come to expect it these days. 2-0 pitch. Base hit up 
the middle. One run is in. Two run. Oh, he tripped over. Throw comes in to a home plate. It's cut off. They might have had a play on him. He's safe. I think they were definitely going to have a play there at Blackman at the plate when he came around third. After leaving the bag, he tripped and stumbled. He was quick to get right back to his feet, though, and continue on. And had Pate not cut that one off, they probably would have had that play at the plate. But instead, the dogs have put three more runs across. Well, we made up for that three-run third given up. It's six to three. Here's double all to Ace Allen. And we're, we're still in business, Andrew. We've got runners at first and second. It's still only one out. Runners lead away. Roper at second. And looks like a strike call, nothing at one to double all. It's Yarbrough there at first base. Thank you, Sam. Courtesy running for Holiday. Ace Allen is one for two with a strikeout and a run scored. Boy, that hit by X Holiday, that was that was a comebacker line drive. That was right back at Just, the pitcher. Uh, yep. The old one. Called strike two outside corner. Uh, I mean X did exactly what he needed to do. Just drove the ball right back up the middle. Ace Allen looking to continue the inning and the damage here. Only one out. And we're looking for more after plating three. The 0-2, a bouncer. Ball one as Clements keeps it in front of him. One ball, two strikes now to the Bulldog shortstop at Ace Allen. Blue out in center field made a good play on that hit by X and just threw a dart. Like you said, Andrew, had they not cut that one off, we'd have had to play at the plate. One two pitch. Just missed the outside corner. Did I just hear a malarkey? I think you did. I think I heard a malarkey. Now we have time called coaching visit and this may be more of a I'm frustrated I'm coming to the mound to just kind of talk to my pitcher and this, calm him down and calm myself down. This may be more of a hey listen I know that's a strike but he's not giving it to you and I think he's asking his catcher is it a strike are we really missing of course you know what the answer is going to be from the catcher it's a strike no coach we're not missing at all we're hitting it every time. 100%. 100%. No, he wouldn't really say that. But Either way, uh, very close call that probably was strike three, uh, considering how the zone has been today. So the count is two and two after that uh, mound visit. From I think it's safe to coach. say that the, 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 the strike zone has fluctuated a little bit as this game has gone on. It is what it is. And unfortunately, the umpire doesn't send you a memo before the inning starts to tell you that it's going to fluctuate. Two and two the count, the pitch on the way. A high chopper back to the mound. The runners will move over. The throw goes to first in time to retire. Ace Allen. So two outs, two in scoring position. And now Tony Ware, the senior, with a chance to maybe get a couple more runs here. Tony is one for two with a strikeout and a run scored. I believe he was a strikeout or a victim of that strikeout his last at bat. So you know that he is coming to the plate hungry as well. He wants to add an RBI to his column. X Holiday with two RBIs, Samuel Forby with two RBIs, Dalen Holiday with an RBI, All Red with an RBI. Bouncer up there, and a good stop there by the catcher, Clements, again. Keeps yeah. everybody where they're supposed to be. One ball and no strikes. I tell you, Clements, Clements has done some work this afternoon behind the plate for the Phoenix. He's, he's done a, a well of a job so far. Samuel Formby waiting on deck, hoping he'll get a turn here with two outs. Time asked for by Tony, and he gets a granted. 
Andrew, the Braves are going to be back in action tonight. They go to Houston, so a little later start time than what we are used to. First pitch scheduled for 8.10 p.m. out in Texas against the Astros. Outside ball two, two and nothing to count. First trip for the Braves to the uh, tro to Tropic not Tropicana, to Minute Maid Minute Park Maid. since yep. game six. Yep. I just got the butterfingers today, apparently. Darius Vines will take the mound. Yeah, Braves trying to find a fit for that spot left open by Spencer Strider. 2-0 pitch on the way. Just missed the outside corner, 3 and nothing. Today is also Jackie Robinson Day. Jackie Robinson made his first official start today back in 1947 for the then Brooklyn Dodgers. Robinson would go on to win Rookie of the Year in 47, and then two years later, be the MVP of the 49 season. Right down the middle, three and one, taking all the way. First ballot Hall of Famer as well. One of the absolute greats. If you've ever seen the movie 42, I, I, if you've not seen it, I recommend it. 3-1 pitch, outside ball four, they're loaded up. And here comes Samuel Formby. Good at bat there by Tony Ware. But the movie, for, the movie 42, great movie, great movie. Samuel Formby has already had a big hit this afternoon. He had the two RBI single back in the first that would put the dogs on the board, and he is one for two. You seen 42? I have. Great, great movie. Yeah. Harrison Ford was Branch Rigby. Yep. Ground ball, pass first, base hit. One run is in, two runs are gonna score. Throw comes toward the plate, it's offline. It is eight to three, Bulldogs lead. Samuel Forby, a four RBI afternoon so far, and we are only in the fourth inning. He is responsible for half of the Bulldogs runs. Here's Dalen Holiday again. Holiday, another one of the dogs with an RBI. Did he not start this inning? I, I think he did. With a base hit? Yes. Pass the second baseman. You sure did. Yep, you are right. Tenth man to bat in the inning. Ooh. Almost hit him, goes back to the backstop. Throw, no play at the plate, safe. It's 9-3 Bulldogs and up to second base. Goes for me. Did you see Tony catching? He threw it right at him, buddy. He threw it right in his bread basket. Sure did. He had no other choice. <laughs> yeah. He had no other choice. He took that oven mitt and said, I'm my ball. <laughs> no, sir. Nine to three now. Your score is six run inning. Andrew Carter here in the bottom of the fourth for the dogs. This is exactly what they needed. Absolutely is what they needed. Holiday ahead in the count. One ball, no strikes. Samuel Formby now out at second base. 1-0 pitch. That ball is hit to center field. And catch is made by Ballou out there to retire the side. But the Bulldogs strike for six in the bottom half of the fourth and take a 9-3 lead to the fifth when we come back. 60-second timeout on the Searchown Bulldogs Sports Network. together. Listen, the winning will take care of itself. We just have to get everyone involved. In interscholastic sports, we celebrate what makes every one of us unique. And in the pursuit of a common goal, everyone in the huddle, in the bleachers, and in the community comes together. This message presented by the GHSA and the Georgia Athletic Directors Association. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. A six-run inning for the Dogs in the bottom of the fourth. And Cedartown has jumped up to a six-run lead, 
Nine to three is your score. X Holiday still out on the mound for the dogs dealing, and we are ready to go to work here in the top of the fifth as the throw goes down to second base. What an inning for the Cedartown Bats, and the dogs are exactly right back where they need to be, not only in the driver's seat with the score, but also with the momentum. I mean, we talk about all the time how big momentum plays a factor in this ball game, in this in this uh, great game of baseball. And Wow, and X Holiday probably can take a little weight off his shoulders knowing that he's got this cushion here, but we'll see how he does here. And throws a pitch that just missed, I guess. Ball one, one ball, no strikes. Four, five, and six due up for the Phoenix. It's Clements, Caldwell, and Falk. Pitch on the way, strike called. Clements, one for one with a walk and an RBI. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Bounced up there, and that'll be ball two. Two balls and one strike. Searchtown nine and Sonorville three. His RBI was a result, I believe, of that walk that he took, if memory serves me correctly. That all happened back in the top of the third when Sonorville would score three. Ball is drilled deep to left field, but well foul. That'll be two and two now on the count. Yeah, we got the ball back in play. I was wondering what we were waiting, what the umpire was pointing at. Yeah, it landed in the corner. Of course, in high school baseball, you don't have the uh, ball boys or bat boys. No. In the majors, so the fielders have to retrieve those balls. Count even on the Phoenix backstop. Two balls, two strikes. And a breaking ball popped up and fell out of play toward the football field. Speaking of the football field. The football field. On Friday. Friday. This Friday. We've got some soccer action, playoff soccer action. Searchtown hosting Druid Hill, Searchtown boys. 7 o'clock p.m. start time of the match. Breaking ball up, 3-2. and two. You feel that? Breeze. Because that door's open. Just leave it open. Beautiful. Love it. Beautiful. We'll have that for you on the NFHS Network. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Just missed for ball four. Oh. I tell you what. Sometimes you just got to shake the, the eight ball and see what, well, what you get. And, and, and both pitchers have issued some walks on some pitches that have been extremely close. They, they both, you know, missed well out of the zone a few times, but most of these calls that they are not getting that are resulting in walks are really, really close pitches. So that will bring up Caldwell, the right fielder. He's 0 for 1 with an RBI and a strikeout. Pitch on the way. Called a strike, 0 and 1. You call it one way, not the other. Come on. One on, nobody out. We're in the top of the fifth throw over to first, and Clements is back rather easily. W291DN Cedartown, 106.1 FM, 1340 AM WGAA Cedartown. That's fouled away. Strike two. There's your legal ID. There you go. We pause at the pause now for the, uh, what did they say? Pause station for five seconds for the station Student identification. Ten, ten, ten seconds for station identification. That's the universal time for station ID. Lights have just been flicked on here. At the ballpark. 0-2 pitch. Bouncer, good stop. And you know, yesterday while I was watching uh, the final round of the Masters, at the top of the hour, I can't remember which hour it was, but they also came across with their uh -huh. uh, station identification yep. there TV. at the bottom of the screen. TV stations yep. do that too. 1-2 oh, yeah. pitch. Breaking ball drilled deep down the left field line, but foul. They have hit a few. Oh that way that have gone for a mile. That one was drilled as well from Caldwell. Two balls, or one ball rather, and two strikes, nobody out, and the runner on first base. Exet delivers. Did he go? No, he did not. Thought it might have been a strike call. It was, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was, I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought it was, I have to agree. So it's two and two now. 
X the stretch and the pitch. Strike three call, that's a strike three. Out number one, and Luke Caldwell takes a seat. Here's Luke Falk, or Rush Falk rather. Third baseman. Falk is one for two. He's got an RBI and also has been a victim of one of X Holiday's eight strikeouts. Misses up, ball one, one ball, no strikes. X is up to 97 pitches now. Here's the 1-0. Breaking ball and it's fouled, one ball, one strike. I would think, even if he's able to get Falk here, and then was able to retire Williams relatively quickly. I would suspect this would be it, right? I don't Probably think he, would be. I don't think he put him out in the sixth. 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball and a called strike two. I sure hate to pull him out when he's pitching like that. But, but he's about to throw his 100th pitch of the game. The GHSA rules are pretty, pretty clear. 1-2 outside, 2-2. Two two. What is the official number? Well, I think if he goes above a certain number, he has to be pulled. So you don't want to pull him in the that, – that happened to us a few years ago. Swing and a miss, strike three. Well, buddy, he has hit his stride right here in the 90s. That Nine. was pitch 101 and he's ninth strikeout. Nine Ks. And they've been beauties too. Absolute beauties. Left fielder Ethan Williams will bat now with a runner on first and two gone. Williams 0 for 2. He has been a victim of a strikeout. Ball one upstairs. Pate, Patterson, Clements, the only three Phoenix that have not struck out this afternoon. 1 0 pitch, a fastball and a strike. Come on, man. One one, fastball low. Two balls and a strike. Williams, a big, tall, lanky kid. Fly ball to right center field. Samuel Farnby is there. Out number three, a great play there. Samuel Formby running it down, and we head now to the bottom half of the fifth. Cedartown leading 9-3 over the Phoenix. Back after this 60-second break on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Make the right play. Go to Peach State Ford in Cedartown today. Rush to Peach State Ford in Cedartown. Peach State Ford has a championship lineup of new and pre-owned vehicles. Peach State Ford is now open in your backyard. Peach State Ford is proud to be part of your local community. Whether you're waiting for your vehicle to get serviced, picking up a part for your vehicle, or stopping by to check out a new vehicle for yourself, Peach State Ford offers a wide range of amenities to enhance your experience. Peach State Ford in Cedartown, 2076 Rockmart Highway, 770-748-3673. Live Wire Surplus. Stop in today at 546 North Main Street. New items are arriving all the time. At Live Wire, they have unbelievable deals on lawn mowers, weed eaters, and leaf blowers. But that's not all. How about your patio? Live Wire has top of the line grills, patio tables and chairs, fire pits, and so much more. All fresh off the truck, brand new, still packaged, and price to sell. Live Wire Surplus, 678 861 5021. Take your truck, you're going to need it to load up on the savings. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. 9-3 to three is your score as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. X Holiday putting on a clinic from the mound, but we expect that fifth inning to be his final inning of work. X threw five innings, three runs, three hits, five walks, nine strikeouts. He has thrown 105 pitches. So a good afternoon of work there for the Bulldogs senior here on senior night. We also have a pitching change out on the mound for the Phoenix. It'll be Braden Cantrell who will come in and relieve Jackson Pate. Pate, his night is done. He would go four innings. He would give up nine runs on seven hits, eight of those runs earned. He would also issue four walks and only record four strikeouts. Yeah, he was roughed up there in the uh, fourth inning. 
looked pretty good through the, you know, he gave up the three in the first inning, and the dogs weren't able to do much with him second and third, but that fourth inning, big time for the Bulldogs, and it was his undoing. Bottom half of the order for the dogs, due up six, seven, and eight in form B, Dingler all red. First pitch on the way from the new hurler, Cantrell. Misses away for ball one, one ball and no strikes. Caleb's been aboard with a walk. Here comes the 1-0. Breaking ball up, two to nothing. We play the Southeast Raiders tomorrow, 5.30 start at Southeast. And then on Thursday, doubleheader again with these guys. The 2-0. Swing and a miss, laid on that one, 2-1. Another good opportunity for the Dogs to pick up a region win tomorrow, and that would complete the sweep of the Raiders. The wide, the 2-1. And it's popped up to the right side. That'll drift out of play. And the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Through two games against Southeast, the Dogs have played it a total of 26 runs. Ten in game one. That was a week last week today. And then 16 against that Raiders squad on Saturday. Yep. Those kids, I tell you what, they had a rough go of it on Saturday. They lost to Sonorville 15 to nothing and turned around and lost to us 16 to nothing. 2-2 two -two pitch, breaking ball is fouled away. And yes. it looked like they were celebrating senior day for those kids. They had cookie cakes, they had uh, some balloons, some, some stuff uh, that would make they one believe that it might have been senior day. I'm guessing they probably did that prior to game one that we weren't there for. Right. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch on the way to Caleb. And he swings and misses for strike three. And down he goes on strikes for out number one. That'll bring up Cole Dingler. Dingler 0 for 1. Comes to the plate with the bases empty and one out. Always love his walk up song. Absolutely. Classic. Swing and a miss, late on the heat. Big cut there, though, by Dingler. And I tell you what, Cantrell's working pretty quickly. Ball one pitch to him. Bounced up there, one ball, one strike. Count even on the Bulldogs' first baseman. 1-1 one, one pitch. Ball two, that one missed up. A couple of scores from some major league games that are already in progress. 2-1 is swung and missed, 2-2 two and two now. The Orioles lead the Twins in the bottom of the second. The Phillies and the Rockies are scoreless, top of the third. They're in Philadelphia. Go Rockies. 2-2 is fouled straight back to the netting. The Marlins lead the Giants 3-0, top of the third. Suddenly the Marlins are playing a little uh, better. Fish trying to come back and make some noise. The Guardians defeated the Red Sox earlier today by a final score of 6-0. 2-2 pitch on the way. Bounced up there. The Nationals will be the ninth cap. They're out on the West Coast taking on Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts and that crew out in L.A. Their first pitch scheduled is 10-10, and here's a start time for you. The Reds and the Mariners, first pitch 9-42. If it's, if, if it's not thrown at 9-42, I'm filing a complaint. That's about away three and two. That sounds like a TBS time. I'm just saying, if you're going to be that specific, you remember, you it remember, better be for a good purpose. You, you know, I remember back in the day when TBS, everything started at uh, five after. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yes. Yep. Yep. 7.05, 7.35. Coming up after the game, dinner and a movie. Yep. 11.05 Eastern. Yep. Ball four outside. Good job there by Dingler. Got down 0-2 and was able to work the count full and draws a walk with Looks one like out. We're going to have time called. Dakota Matthews has grabbed a bat, and he's going to come to the plate. So Matthews will at least bat in the spot of 
Gavin Allred. We'll see if he replaces him defensively when the dogs head back out onto the field. But right now, first things first. He's going to grab the bat and swing the stick, see if we can't add some more runs here. Matthews and Allred split the catching duties. At the beginning of the season, Matthews was really the primary catcher, but Allred has come on here in this latter part of the season and has got the start quite a bit behind the plate for the dogs. Stretching the pitch on the way to Matthews, he takes up for ball one. Matthews still, though, is number one in the hair category. Oh, yes. What a pitch. Wow, called strike one. Looked like it was high and away. Mm, one ball, one strike now to Dakota Matthews. Dingler leads away at first base. And the pitch is lined to second, and it's off his glove, but they're going to have the force at second as Dingler had to freeze on the line drive. So that's unfortunate for the Bulldogs. But, again, one of those that you just really can't do anything nope. with. It's one of those things that you're right. It's just out of your control. So that will bring up Jack Roper. X Holiday will be on deck, so that would mean he's going to stay in the game and play shortstop. So Which I'm will guessing. probably put uh, Ace Allen back at third. Yep, and Everett Perkins will come out. And then we'll see who will pitch. Roper to the plate, though. And Roper takes a strike, 0 1. Jack is 0 for 1 with a walk, a strikeout, and a run scored. So the DH will be batting for the pitcher, but the pitcher will be somebody else in another part of the lineup. Just missed outside. 1-1 one, one the count now. Instead of DHing for the third baseman, he'll DH for the pitcher. 1-1. One, one. Couldn't check his swing, went around 1-2. and two. One ball, two strikes, and two outs. Good pitch there by Cantrell. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Dogs looking to keep the inning going here. The one-two. Just stayed alive and found it straight back. That backstop has taken some abuse today. Ain't it, though? I mean. Our eardrums, too. Good night. X Holiday, the batter on deck, retrieves that loose ball. And the pitch. It's a strikeout, but he's going to be safe at first. It bounced straight up off the plate. And he's going to be safe at first, and that's going to be a strikeout. But first and second, and the inning continues. That means we'll go back to the top of the order in X Holiday. He's two for two. A walk and two RBIs. Meeting out on the mound between Clements and Cantrell. They're going to get together. What a good day at the plate he's had. Pitched, pitched great, and he's got a couple of RBIs and two for three in a walk. I mean, that's – Not that's bad. Pull. Not a bad afternoon. It's pulling your weight, isn't it? Not a bad senior day for the senior. Not at all. First and second with two outs. Cantrell. Delivers, fouled back to the screen. 0-1 oh, the count now to X Holiday. The breeze continuing to kind of blow in from center field, not terribly, but there is a little bit of a breeze as the sun is, of course, starting to set there in the west. And it is turning into a absolutely gorgeous evening here in Cedartown at CHS, minus the smoke. I was about to say, with the exception of the smoke, it was clear Crystal when we got clear. Here. But the smoke has cooled things down a bit and bringing out the, uh, the sniffles and the coughing a tad bit. Still a beautiful day weather-wise, other than that. X takes a call strike, dropped it in there, nothing in two. That's a good pitch there by Cantrell. A lot of movement on that one. X couldn't do anything but watch it go by, so he's behind in the count now, down to his final strike. He's got to protect here. 
Two on, two out. Here's the 0-2, breaking ball. He stays alive and fouls it with the plates. Another good quality at bat for Holiday. Staying alive, grinding here against Cantrell. Dakota Matthews, the runner at second. Jack Roper is at first. Cantrell, the long look into Clements. They've just now decided on what they want. 0-2 pitch, foul back. Tried to go away from X there, but he was ready for it. Just a little late on it. Stays alive. X is focused in. Still yet to get together. Now they finally do. 0-2 pitch again. Breaking ball, tap toward first base. Race to the bag will be won by the first baseman Patterson and that'll retire the side. Dogs leave a couple of base runners aboard in the top half, or bottom half of the fifth inning rather as we head to the sixth. Seertown still leads though, nine to three. We'll come back after the 60 second timeout and a word from our Bulldog sponsors on the Seertown Bulldog Sports Network. Coverage of Cedartown High School Bulldogs baseball on the Big Double A is brought to you in part by Republican State Representative Trey Kelly of Cedartown. This is Representative Trey Kelly. I want to wish all the players and coaches a safe and successful season. You've worked hard to represent us on the field, and I'm proud to represent you in the Georgia House of Representatives. Again, this is Representative Trey Kelly, and I want to thank you for listening to the Big Double A. Go Dogs! This announcement paid for by State Representative Trey Kelly, kellyforhouse.com. Cedar Stream, the industry leader in screen printed apparel. They offer screen printing, embroidery, and signs and banners. At Cedar Stream, they have a fully automated screen printing facility here in Cedartown with the ability to efficiently and effectively distribute products all over the United States. Cedar Stream is a local family run business with a big vision. Contact Cedar Stream today to find out what they can do for you. 800 686 7488 or cedarstream.com. Cedar Stream, shirts, it's what we do. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Nothing doing for the dogs in the bottom of the fifth, so we will go to the top of the sixth, nine to three. Cedartown with that six run lead, and as we predicted, predicted X Holiday's night on the mound is done. Holiday will move out to his normal spot out there at shortstop. And it will be Owen Pilgrim who will take over for Cedartown and try to get us through these final two innings and come away with a opening series win against the Sonoraville Phoenix here on senior night at the Dog Pound. Ace yeah, Allen has also moved over to third. I'm sorry, Andrew, go ahead. It's all right. A uh, fine outing by X Holiday, no doubt, as you were mentioning. Five innings of work, the nine strikeouts, None of the runs were earned, by the way. All three were unearned runs, so his ERA doesn't suffer through those three runs that were uh, given up in the top of the third inning. Only three hits allowed, too. So a good job by X Holiday, who takes over on the field. And the warm-up toss is continuing now for Owen Gilbert. I think this will be the last one. Throw about to go down to second after all red. Receives it, and he does, and all red does stay in the game to catch. We thought that maybe there might be a change since they inserted Dakota Matthews into the lineup offensively in the spot of all red, but Gavin will stay behind the plate and try to close this one out for the dogs. We got to get six more outs and we can go home. But first thing is first. It'll be eight, nine, and one due up for the Phoenix. Sam Dixon, the DH, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. He'll lead things off. First pitch takes low for ball one. You know, they may have pinch hit for him just to give him time to get ready yeah, to come out. That's right. With a 9-3 lead. You know, Dakota can hit. I mean, I'm not saying he can't hit. He's definitely a good hitter. But just to give all red time to uh, stay in there and not have to wait to put his gear on. There's a call strike right down the middle. 1-1 the count. 
So normal fans don't like it, thought it was high. Might have been a, a skosh high. A skosh. A smidgen. Yeah. The 1-1. One, one. Foul away. 1-2 and two. off the screen toward the third base grandstands. They'll check the baseball, see if they're going to keep it in play or not. Tomorrow we play uh, Southeast Whitfield, 5.30 first pitch here on the Big Double A, Searchown Bulldog Sports Network. Thursday doubleheader at Sonorville. All the road again. 5 p.m. start for game one of the twin bill. One, two pitch, a tapper foul. We'll have to go on the road again. But then on Friday, we're back home on, at Searchown Memorial Stadium. Doc Ayers Field, Doc Ayers Pitch will be, will be the uh, – Official term on Friday is the Seartown Boys Soccer will be hosting Druid Hills, first round of the Class 4A GHSA playoffs. One, two, pitch, right down the middle and call strike three. We'll try to end the season with a series win. I can't wait to get on the road again. You're welcome. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you so much. I actually will be playing all week, except for game one of the doubleheader. And I, well, I was going to say I promise not to sing anymore. I can't make that promise. You know me too well. First pitch to Mayfield, and he skies that one foul. 0 and 1. Mayfield 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Struggling at the plate today. Behind in the count now here as Owen Pilgrim continues to work. The 0 1. Breaking ball. Got the call. And again, our guests are most unhappy. O2. Reached out there and fouled it away. I have a feeling when they check out later tonight, they will not leave a five star review. At least against the umpiring crew. O2. Tapper toward the left side and foul. Mayfield staying alive here against Bill, fouling a few off. Norville knows that runs are at a premium right now for them, and they've got to take advantage of it as much as they can. They're down to their final five outs and trailing by six, and again, fighting for their playoff lives. Swing and a miss, strike three. Blew that one by him. Out number two, two strikeouts for Pilgrim. And that is Mayfield's third strikeout of the afternoon. We'll go back to the top of the order in Jackson Pate. He's one of only three Phoenix that have not been a victim of a strikeout. Pate was the starting pitcher for Snorville and then would move over to play shortstop. First pitch on the way to him. He fouls that one straight back our way off the screen, nothing in one. Two Pate. Pate after he left the pitcher's mound, kind of just the same thing X did, now playing shortstop. Yep, just moved over to that shortstop position. Keeps on keeping on. It's one for two with a walk. Breaking ball is upstairs. One, one the count. One, one pitch. Ball. Mm. Two and one, low and away. Came off the mound. Awkwardly, awkward, yeah. yeah. Looks to be okay. Two one. Foul right back in my way. Buddy, that was all Andrew Carter. Glad that net is a strong net because it would have been right in my face. Count goes to two balls and two strikes. Two Can balls, two strikes, two outs. Can Owen strike out Jackson Pate for the first time today? He struck out two in a row in relief. You know what they say, third time's a charm. 2-2 two -two pitch, low and away, ball three. That's count, I worked the count full at three balls and two strikes. Here comes the payoff. Popped him up, and that'll be foul. Jack. 
Eight not gonna go down quietly. Full count, payoff pitch on the way. Lost all four, yep. Line outside. That's his second walk of the night. Well, see, here's the thing. Pate is more than likely, if not one of their, if not the best hitter, one of their best hitters. Absolutely, I agree. And that's the person you do not want to uh, to let beat you. So they work carefully around Pate. And here comes Blue. Blue is 0 for 2 with a run scored, a walk, and a strikeout. Yeah. Pate with a big lead over there at first. Outside, they will have him. Nope, nope, he's going to steal it. Kind of got a late start. Well, and he thought he was going to get hung up. And yeah. for a moment, he thought about going back to first. All Red thought about throwing down to first, but then he went to second. And unfortunately, I think we were kind of asleep at the middle of the yeah. infield, and nobody was there to cover second base, and the throw yeah. was off its mark. And that's why it was such so, so delayed at getting out there. Really, nothing went right on that play for the dogs. 1-0 pitch misses high and tight. Two balls and no strikes now. You have to stay focused here, even with a six-run lead. You've got to keep your eye on the prize. 2-0 pitch, a bouncer and a good stop there by Allred. Three balls, no strikes. So Pilgrim would record the first two outs of the innings, courtesy of the strikeout and gives up a walk and is trailing here 3-0. Lost All it. four upstairs, four straight miss. Runners on first and second. So two consecutive walks with two outs. And now here's Patterson. Patterson 0 for 2, a run score and a walk. Pilgrim was asking the home plate umpire where he was missing, and the umpire told him high. Here comes Coach Smith out of the dugout to have a talk with his relief pitcher. And I think this is another one of those just, hey, it's all right, just calm down. Keep your head in the game. If you're not getting that call, don't throw it up there expecting to get it. Fresh set of baseballs coming into the home plate umpire. Put them in his pocket. And Coach Davenport delivering those balls. Put him in his pocket and head out to the pitcher's mound to break up the party, but I think Coach Smith was already ready to break it up. So runners at first and second, Blue out at first base, Pate at second base, both reaching on walks. And that will bring up Patterson. 0 for 2, a walk and a run scored. Patterson, first baseman. First pitch is upstairs, ball one. It's five straight that missed. And Patterson was not ready for it. And we still missed it. Oh, no pitch. So it's okay, still good. nothing and nothing. Oh. Oh, that oh. ball is drilled. Foul. And it is foul. Foul and over the fence. Boy, that ball was tattooed. It's a judgment call for the home plate umpire to make, and he said foul ball. Uh, what's the question? Home run or not? I wasn't even close. That was foul by 35 feet. I measured it. <laughs> exactly. Just saying. Sam is perfect with the eyeball measurement. You should see the pictures. On, you should see the pictures on his wall. You got that house. right, baby. <laughs> the old one. Bring that one a little bit low. One ball, one shot. Every single one of them is perfectly level if you close one eye. One one. Tapper, second base should be out of the inning, and we are. Working around some trouble, two left the board. In the top half of the six, we head to the bottom half. Cedar Town leading 9-3 over the Sonorville Phoenix back after 60 seconds on the Cedar Town Bulldogs Sports Network.
Hey, it's the Border Mexican Restaurant, located at 718 North Main Street, right here in Cedartown. Their phone number, 678-246-1031. They serve a wide variety of your favorite Mexican food made fresh daily. Great food, great fun. It's great for the whole family. Come see us at the Border Restaurant, right here on Main Street in Cedartown. Or you can call for takeout at 678-246-1031. The Border Mexican Restaurant is the best Mexican food north of the border. That's the Border Restaurant right here in Cedartown. Bradford's Drug Store on North Main Street in Cedartown is your locally owned and operated Good Neighbor Pharmacy. Bradford's accepts most prescription plans, and remember Bradford's for all of your gift and decor needs. Bradford's pharmacist takes time to get to know you, explain your medication, and answer any questions that you may have. Go by and see Bill Brewster and all the fine folks at Bradford's the next time you need a prescription filled. Also use their convenient drive-thru. Bradford's Drug Store, 500 North Main Street, Cedartown, 770-748-3100. And all the folks at Bradford's say, Go dogs. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Dogs with a six-run lead. 9-2-3. Thanks to a six-run four. Yes, Braden Cantrell will stay on the mound in relief for the Phoenix. A little... uh, bit of controversy there at the close of that sixth inning I think even after everybody was off of the field for the dogs Sonorville coach was still arguing his point but of course it fell on deaf ears Ace Allen will lead things off for the dogs 2-3-4 do you up first pitch to Ace he swings and misses strike one Seertown nine and Sonorville three. Nine runs on seven hits, one air. Three runs, three hits, no errors for the Phoenix. The 0 1. Called strike two, got the inside corner. Yeah, he did. Just buzzed it. Good pitch there from Cantrell. So Allen now behind in the count, 0 2. Got to protect here. 0 2 pitch. Tap her toward the first base side. That'll roll foul. It'll stay nothing in two. Ace Allen, Tony Ware, Samuel Formy, the batters do up here in the bottom half of the sixth against Cantrell, who's thrown 29 pitches so far in relief of Jackson Paint. The wind up, the 0 2. Ball one outside. Allen is one for three. He's got a strikeout on the afternoon. Also, his score to run for Cedartown. Got the start at shortstop and then moved over to third base after X Holiday's night was done on the mound. 1 2 is, a, is going to be hit to the right side. Foul by just a foot or so. Another good job there taking that breaking ball and hitting should, it the other way. Should we argue it? Should we talk about it? I don't think should, so. Should we go out and put our, our, our bat on well, the line see, and point down the line and measure and in, in, the, in, in his defense, that was quite more obvious. Oh, absolutely. You're right. You're 100% right. I'm just being facetious. Never would you be facetious. One, two, pitch. He swings and misses for strike three, unable to check his swing. And, and Ace Allen is retired. That'll bring up the senior, Tony Ware. Bye-bye. Tony, where? Cedar Valley Arts Festival will be a week from this coming weekend. Looking forward to that, and uh, hopefully the playground will be ready to open by then. Well, you know, that's the plan. There's a bouncer, one ball and no strikes. To Tony Ware. That is absolutely the plan. Of course, a lot of that has just been dependent upon weather. Some of the things that they still have to wrap up and finish, they can't do in the rain. We've had a little bit of that. 1-0 pitch to Tony. Bounced up there, ball two. Cantrell almost looked like he kind of slipped out there on the mound on that pitch. We saw Owen Pilgrim kind of come off the mound awkwardly after a pitch. Cantrell, not as obvious as Pilgrim's was, but it did look like maybe a little slip out there. 2-0 pitch. 
Ball three, well outside. Tony Ware earned himself a base on balls at his last at bat. He is one for two with two runs scored. He's also got a strikeout. 3-0. Oh. All the way back to the backstop for ball four. Golly. That thing's going to need some ibuprofen in a ice pack tonight. Meaning us. Yeah. Ball, Samuel, Samuel Forby will come to the plate. He is having himself a night. Two for three, four RBIs. Stretching the pitch. Whoa. Oh, he got hit hard yeah. right, right above the number. They just said, well, we'll keep you from picking up another RBI. Samuel will begrudgingly go to first base after being hit by the pitch. Now to bring up Dalen Holiday, the DH. And that one hurt. <laughs> that one that one was motoring when it got to him. That'll be purple in the morning. He might need that ibuprofen and that ice pack. Dalen so Dalen Holiday will come to the plate. The DH for the dogs, one for three with an RBI. Oakland umpire making note of something. Probably just that the DH is now batting for the pitcher and not for the third baseman. After the uh, after we brought in the, re or the relief pitcher, o uh, Owen Pilgrim. First and second, one out. Dalen Holiday, one for three, a ribby. He also had a productive out his uh, first time up. Swings and misses, but the runner's going to move up on the pitch getting away. It's a pass ball. One ball, uh, no, no balls and one strike, rather. But Tony Ware and Samuel Forby move up 90 feet. The infield playing almost in on the grass right at the border there, so Samuel Forby gets a huge lead out at second base. Almost playing even with the shortstop. Oh, what pitch is a little tapper back to the pitcher off his glove, but back to the second baseman. Covering was the, was the first baseman, and that'll be out number two, but a run will score. It's now 10-3 to three Bulldogs. And again, Dalen Holiday just putting the ball in play. Picks up another run for the Dogs. Yeah, DHs don't have to hit home runs unless, yeah. unless you're Marcelo Zuna. Then that's all you hit. Then that's all you do. Uh, but, well, I mean, you don't – you get big hits and everything. You know, Dalen's had a couple of little bouncers in the infield, but they've been productive. Yep. They've, either, they, they've either moved runners over or scored runners, and he's had a good day at the plate, even though he may only have one hit. Brody Blackman will come to the plate now. He's going to pick up a stick and bat for the dogs. He takes one, misses ball one. It was low. It was down low. How low can you go? Can you go down low? All the way to the float? Nope, sure can. Not even close. 1 0 to Blackman. Kind of an awkward swing there. Fouled it back off of the skinny part of the bat. 1 1. Bottom half of the six innings, Searton leading 10-3. One-one pitch on the way to Brody, swing and a miss. Blackman is batting in Caleb Forby's spot in the order. With Cole Dingler on deck. One-two pitch. High and away, two and two. Get out of there by Blackman to lay off that one. That will even up the count at two balls and two strikes. One on, two out. One run across. The Dogs with a seven run lead, 10 to three. Two, two, swinging a miss, strike three, and Blackman's down. And so are the Bulldogs on the six, but the Dogs add another run. It's now a 10 3 lead, top of the seventh. Dogs looking to close this one out and pick up their first region uh, win over Sonorville this season after we come back. 60 second break on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Cedar Valley Golf Course has been the place to play golf in Cedartown and Polk County for nearly a century. Locally owned and operated since 1924, Cedar Valley Golf Course offers 18 holes of some of the most beautiful fairways and greens in the area. Cedar Valley Golf Course is a proud supporter of the Cedartown High School Bulldogs and the greater Cedartown and Polk County region. 
Call for tea time, 770-748-9671. Located just south of Cedar Town at 1811 Buckhannon Highway. Cedar Town's original golf course, Cedar Valley Golf Course. Cedartown Automotive is your one stop for all your automotive needs. For oil changes, new tires, or tire repair, brake work, tune ups, air conditioner service, or repair, think of Cedartown Automotive. Cedartown Automotive is a longtime supporter of Cedartown High School Athletics here on WGAA. Cedartown Automotive on East Avenue in Cedartown. Give them a call today at 770 749 5040 or stop by their beautiful location for fast and friendly service. And all the folks at Cedartown Automotive say, Go Dogs! Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. We go to the final frame with a seven-run lead, 10-3. to three. The Dogs on top of the Sonorable Phoenix as we head to the top of the seventh inning. A pitching change for Cedartown. Will Graham will come on to try to close things out. The side-armed right-hander will try to pick up a region win here against the Phoenix to start off the last series of the season for the Dogs. Andrew, Cedartown going all the way back to the Northwest Series have a five-game region win streak in their favor. Trying to stretch it out to six here if they can close things out against the Phoenix. And then tomorrow we would try to go for number seven against Southeast Whitfield. See if they're able to uh, finish things up here. Brock Clements, Luke Caldwell, and Rush Falk will be the batters due up here at the top of the seventh against the new Bulldog Hurler. Clements is one for one with an RBI and two walks. Graham delivers, hits him. Wow. First pitch. And he'll be at first base to lead off the seventh. So that puts Clements at first, and that'll put Caldwell to the plate, the right fielder. 0 for 2, two strikeouts and an RBI. had the controversial what we thought was a swing from our vantage point, but was actually called a hit by pitch, which would result in a run being scored back in the third inning. Another hit basket. Two consecutive pitches, two consecutive hit bats. And the sidearm break is not breaking right now. No, it is not. So that'll bring out number 21, Rush Falk. Falk is one for three, two strikeouts. And an RBI. What you don't want to happen is to get back to the top of the order yeah. and Jack Jackson Pate because uh, he can hurt you. He can hurt you, you're right. We've got a left-handed batter here, and the first pitch is outside for ball one. And would that, have been that another. Might have been a hit of batsman if you have a right-handed <laughs> yes, batter. Yes, it would have been. I have to agree with you. We were thinking the same thing, my friend, the same thing. See if we see if Graham can locate it a little bit better. Still, definitely. Still, still outside. Two balls, no strikes. Definitely would have been a hit batsman. Two and nothing to count. There's a strike call, two and one. Pitch there by Graham. Oh, yeah. Two one. Ball three outside. Runner is going to take off for third. Everybody's going to take off. It got away from everybody. And the count now three balls and a strike. And if the bases get loaded here, I, I mean, uh, I think you pull it. I don't know if you. I don't know if you pull him right away, but I mean, he's you definitely, at least, you definitely at least, not hitting his spots right now. You at least get somebody up in the pen. Absolutely. 3-1 pitch, right down the middle, 3-2. and two. Full count now on fall. And the payoff. Swing and a miss, strike three. What a beauty. What a beauty. That's the first out of the inning. Phoenix down to their last two outs. That's going to bring up Williams, the left fielder. And if I'm Williams, I'm just going to stand as close to the plate as I can and hope I get hit. He is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. 
Fly ball off the glove of the second baseman. Runner is going to score, and it's going to be a base hit. It's now 10 to 4. Caleb Formby went out to try to make that leaping grab, and it was just off of his glove. It at least kept it close. Oh, he almost had that too. So one run is across, and it's a six run lead for the dogs, 10 to 4. And he, and he looks in and says, Look, I should have had that one. Yep. So this will be Dixon, the DH. 0 for 3, two strikeouts, throw to first back. Gets away. Yep. Now it's going to score a run. And still standing at second base. They finally get the ball back in, but uh, it's now 10 to 5, and it's getting a little too close for comfort. That did not take long. They already had somebody in the bullpen because here comes Coach Johnson. So Graham is going to have a short outing. Two runs have come across. It's 10 to 5. We'll have a new pitcher. Let's take a 60 second break here on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network, and we'll be right back. Looking for a good used vehicle? Don't go out of town. Come see the folks at Dingler Motor Company, 526 North Main Street. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Dingler Motor Company can get you back on the road in no time with their in-house financing. Top quality, pre-owned, late model cars, trucks, and SUVs. Stop by and check out their wide selection at 526 North Main Street across from Livewire Surplus. Call them at 770-748-0906. Search them on Facebook at Dingler Motor Co. That's Dingler Motor Company. Rocky and Patty Tillery, two Cedartown High School graduates, and they stayed right here in the county and went into business. They employ right at 100 people, and they've been doing that for a long time. Most of their work is from out of the county, but they want to push our youngsters here, no matter what they're doing, Little League, Pony League, high school baseball, basketball, football, and soccer, and that's Polk County Public Service. They appreciate serving you. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Jay O'Neill will get the responsibility of getting the final two outs for the dogs here in the top of the seventh. Cedartown running into trouble. Will Graham having some issues locating, hit back-to-back -back hitters. Would get a strikeout, give up a base hit. That would drive in a run and then throw one away, go into first base, which would lead to another run scored. So two runs already across, and it's 10 to 5. Ethan Williams, the left fielder, stands out at second base for the Phoenix, and at the plate, it's Dixon, the DH. He has yet to see a pitch. He was at the plate when that one was thrown away to first. Dixon is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Jay O'Neill going to try to make him a victim of a strikeout for a third time. As we mentioned earlier, Jay looked really good against the Southeast Raiders on Saturday. First pitch, blows him away with a fastball, swing and a miss. Looked really good right there with that pitch from O'Neill. He's keeping a close eye on that runner at second as well. O oh, one pitch, fastball away. Count now even one ball, one strike. Sam Dixon at the plate. One one. Swing and miss one and two. Dogs had a Seven run lead, 10 to three. Phoenix able to strike for two. Those were their first two runs since way back in the third when they would put up a three spot and tie the dogs. One, two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Pass out number two here at the top of the seventh. O'Neill looking sharp. It'll be the bottom of the order in Gary Mayfield. 0 for 3, three strikeouts. The Phoenix down to their final out, and it's going to be on the shoulders of Mayfield. Pitch on the way. 
tap or foul behind home plate. Nothing in one the count. You want to get him because you don't want to face Pate. Pate's on deck. Got a new baseball. Getting a sign now from Caleb Forby at second base to Jay. Now we're ready to go to work. Mayfield stands in again. Called strike two outside corner and the Phoenix down their final strike here in the top of the seven. You can hear the dogs fans getting behind O'Neill here. 0-2 the count and he steps off. Two pitch. Foul back again to the backstop. Still nothing in two. O'Neill looking to strike out the side here. Beautiful sunset. Just on the top of the trees. O2. A little swinging bunt. Throw to first in time. And a great stretch by Dingler, and the Dogs win it six to five or ten to five. Final score. What a play! Able to get him over at first base, and Cedartown wins the first of a crucial region series with the Sonoraville Phoenix by the score of ten to five. Sam. Yeah, just a great game by the Dogs. Uh, we jumped out to an early three-run lead. We would give up three, let them tie it, then come back. The Dogs in the Bottom of the fourth inning, put up a six spot and then just commanded the rest of the game from that point forward. What a day for X Holiday on the mound for Cedartown. He would go five innings, three runs, none of them earned on three hits. He would issue five walks, but he would record nine strikeouts, throwing 105 pitches. That's the highlight defensively for the dogs, offensively for Cedartown. You have to look at the night that Samuel Formby had at the plate, two for three with four RBIs and just an excellent performance from top to bottom for the dogs to pick up this very important win here in game one of the series. It sets up for a sweep of Southeast tomorrow, and then we will, of course, go on the road Thursday to take on Sonorville, and we got to keep the momentum going. You know, you can't put it in cruise control or autopilot at this point. This is, the, this is where we separate ourselves from, you know, the rest of the pack. Are we going to continue to play strong and play for a chance for second place in the region, or are we going to kind of take our eyes off the prize? I think the way that the dogs are looking right now, Andrew, we're going to be set to go for the rest of the uh, rest of the week and the final three games of the regular season. We'll, we'll see how things go. Uh, we'll also be looking at the region scoreboard and seeing how some of the other teams do. We're definitely interested in that Northwest Whitfield uh, and um, Heritage game, and I think if Northwest Whitfield loses to Heritage, Cedartown could possibly move up, you know, tonight and maybe stay there uh, if the dogs take two out of three and, you know, things could, you know, crazier things could happen. Absolutely. But we'll just have to wait and see how all that uh, kind of develops throughout the week. But the Bulldogs will be back in action tomorrow on the road at Southeast Whitfield, first pitch at 5.30 p.m., and we'll have that for you here on the Big Double A. The series wraps up on Thursday with a doubleheader at Sonoraville. First pitch of that game will be at 5 o'clock, and the second game will be about 7.30 or so. We'll have all those games for you here on the Sear Channel Bulldogs Sports Network, the Big Double A. And then on Friday on the NFHS Network only, we'll have a special feature for you, playoff soccer as Cedartown Boys Soccer, who finished second in the region this year, will host a playoff game for the first time in I don't know how long, maybe ever. Uh, the Bulldogs taking on Druid Hills um, here at CHS, and we hope you'll uh, be able to join us for that on the NFHS Network. But come on out and, uh, pack, you know, we, we want as many fans as we can out there. Uh, I know it's going to be a fun time on the, uh, on the pitch out there as the Bulldogs open up uh, their state playoffs. And, boy, they had an exciting run last year, got getting all the way, I think, to uh, either the Elite Eight or the Final Four and losing on some penalty kicks. 
But man, oh man, talk about uh, a great soccer program and looking forward to seeing what the dogs are able to do on Friday as they uh, open up, and we'll have it for you on the NFHS Network. He's Sam Branch. I'm Andrew Carter for Tyrone back at the radio station. Your final score, Cedar Town wins 10-5 to over the Snorville Phoenix, and we hope you have a wonderful night. God bless. We'll talk to you next time when the Bulldogs play here on the Big Double A. Good night. God bless. W291 TS Cedar Town.